Hey, Michael, it is February 19th. I uh, I have been like nodding along this whole time <laughs> when you were talking. You, know, you have a different, slightly different take on it than me, but more or less we're in agreement on the major points. The premise of the argument matters. And I think that's where discovery falls off. I mean, makes a non sequitur attempt at a philosophical argument. They just aren't engaging in a way that Gene Roddenberry did. And by the way, I want to be careful here. It's not that Gene Roddenberry's thesis is the only one. I could see some kind of libertarian argument for why his, you know, quote unquote, utopian future is really a nightmare scape because of centralized control, because of a lack of individual rights, potentially. There's potential there for misdeeds and harm malfeasance. So I'm not saying I think that, but just to say his thesis was not the only defensible thesis. I want to take the argument one step farther and say that it's not that they failed to continue Roddenberry's thesis that makes discovery a bad job. It's that they have no real thesis. They have, like much of modern society, forfeited any real thesis based on principles in favor of a loose collection of sacred cows, of issues, which may even be self-contradictory. They're just not up to it. <laughs> and it's probably going to be hard to find writers that are up to it because they don't groom them like that anymore. I don't know. I would argue that you're, pre you're pretty much there. You're right but just that maybe there's this other element to it. Now add to that that not only are they not able to follow through on their own theses, but now they're shoved in trilogies with each other, with people they fundamentally disagree with, with limited time, not enough organization and planning to really do something great. And you can see that these studios have very little interest in creating the next amazing Star Wars or the next amazing Trek or whatever the case may be. And that's because they're interested with this quarter right now. What I would argue to these executives is that, you know, when the CBS execs sat down and said, we're going to get the rights for Star Trek or Disney bought up Lucasfilm and therefore Star Wars, somebody should have made the argument that waiting was wiser, that planning really was wisest because yeah, they've made their money back on a trilogy, which was by every financial measure, a success, but they've done damage. The whole point is to keep making money in the future. And this is, I think where my biggest problem is with the current system and culture. These companies don't care about preserving the value of a franchise because they'll just buy another one. They are so big, Disney in particular, they're not answerable to posterity. They're not answerable to objective quality. And let's get real here for a minute. Their movies are not so horrible. They're fun adventure flicks. But they're not as good as what we expect of Star Wars. Or of Star Trek. Or whatever. Jumanji. It doesn't matter. The point is it's not good enough. And it's not good enough not because the fans are toxic. It's not good enough because they don't understand it. And they, and they don't try to. It's not like they tried real hard and we're all just so picky. They tried to turn that around in a couple of years. That's what the problem is here. Anything else where they try to blame fans, it's like when politicians try to blame voters. The voters like what the voters like. It's not their fault that your campaign fails. That's how democracy works. And by the way, that's how the free market works. 
We don't have to like whatever crap you shovel out just because you thought to shovel it out. I know that a lot of people will willfully misunderstand points like this because they want to make it political or they want to make it a social commentary. I'm just saying, maybe try. <laughs> maybe try sometimes. I'm not saying Disney is horrible forever. I'm not saying CBS is horrible forever. I'm just saying, take a minute and think it through. <laughs> just do the work. So Star Wars has not been great. The exception to this are some of the spin-offs, like the Star Wars story. I, Rogue One was great. I think a lot of people think it was great. Uh, I liked Solo. Uh, was it the greatest that it could have been? No. But it felt like Star Wars. It was in the spirit, you know? And Mandalorian. Whoo! That one's fierce. So like I was saying a minute ago, there's good and there's bad. You gotta take the good with the bad. But let's tell them what's good and what's not so good. And then maybe they can do better in the future. I don't think that's toxic at all. I think that's very constructive. As long as you don't go out there and start saying nasty mean things about Kathleen Kennedy or <laughs> the CBS execs or whatever, you know, say it respectfully, but say it candidly. There is such a thing as good art and bad art. And, you know, we're seeing a mixed bag here. So they need to hear what's working and what's not. Our little corner of the internet, such as it is, <laughs> can take some kind of position. We can move on to a new topic now, but I just had to say a couple things about it uh, and probably used up all my time just doing that. So <laughs> I will see you tomorrow. Really appreciated your video. Have a good day, buddy.